Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Magnus, and I represent uh, Partrap here together with Anna from Todis. Uh, well, Anna, yeah, I just saw that you, you unmuted yourself. Welcome. Welcome, welcome, everybody. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to our iScala e commerce uh, webinar. Uh, and today's presentation will be run by uh, Partrap in Sweden. Partrap is very well recognized and experienced. Epico partners specializing in e-commerce solutions. And this is actually our first series of webinars in the COVID times. Uh, and we decided to organize as we see really an urgent need around to digitalize and automize as many processes as possible in those trending times. So this is actually the topics that came out after our discussions with clients. And now I will hand over to Magnus Patrickson from Partrap, and he will give you a short introduction and a demo of the solution. After that, we'll have a Q&A sessions. And of course, if there will be a need, we can organize follow-up presentations or one-to-one -one sessions if there will be such an interest from, from your side. So uh, now to Magnus. Magnus, the, the scene is yours. Okay, <laughs> thank you for that introduction, Anna. So, uh, what's today on the agenda? Well, um, I will make a couple of slides uh, about uh, part about Partrap and uh, also our platform, and then we will jump into a couple of customer cases where I will show you how customers is using our software, so you get, can get a um, good understanding of it. But uh, before uh, sort of um, jumping into the session, just a couple of slides here and. Um, the first slides that I wanted to share with you, it's uh, basically, it was an introduction of the new Pogue uh, in 2005. And um, I strongly, I think you believe that you have seen my, got my message that if you're looking on the right hand side of the picture in 2005, you only see one cell phone. If you then, if you then eight years later, yeah, see the picture below, you will see that I will say that more than 99% of the attendees is using a cell phone. So the message is that the digitalization is here to stay. So just a question, just a um, question I'm dropping out to all of you that how, how ready are you with your company with the digitalization since the customer behavior is changing quite rapidly how they search for product information. That's the thought that you can take away. Partrap, uh, we have been a alliance partner of Epicor for plus 15 years. And it means that we have been part of the eco community of, part, of Partrap. So if you're looking at the price list of uh, selected uh, e-commerce platforms, you can see that uh, Epicor storefront is the preferred solution. Uh, we have been, uh, as I said, a partner of um, uh, Epicor for 15 years, and it means that we have been we have been developed the integration into iScala for almost 15 years. So it means that we have, I say, a quite solid uh, understanding of what it takes to make an integration into iScala. Uh, our offices are based in Sweden, south of uh, Stockholm in Gothenburg, um, and. Um, I just started off with um, why should people or why should companies become more digital? Well, the thing is that the customer behavior, the behavior of, of the, um, the customer has changed. As you can see from this Forrester report saying that almost nine out of 10 customers or buyers starts the journey online. So it means that you and your uh, company needs to have a quite well-known uh, um, website in order to collect or to be attractive for your customers. And also, if you're looking a bit more than half, it's searching for the core product information from the manufacturing itself. In the past, as you know, it has been that, okay, you have an either a reseller or distributor in between the manufacturer and the end user. But nowadays, this seems to be more, I would say, seamless built together that actually the, the manufacturing themselves can launch product information on the web, which means that the end user can search for it. Also that, uh, okay, um, almost half would like to purchase directly from a distributor. Well, 
or from a manufacturer, that is also the case that in some cases uh, there could be a channel conflict in between the manufacturer and distributor. But there is way to get around that, that even though if you are a manufacturer, you still can use your distributor in a very efficient way, even though it's in the digital air, area space. And also that by having the product information in a very sort of structured way, to have the product information very accessible on your website means that the customers are also willing to pay a bit more since you have the trust of providing the correct product information. So as you can see, I'm talking a lot of about the product information because most of the time that's the asset for many, many companies to be able to launch the correct product information to your customers. And then we have the, the last um, pillar, which is the Amazon phenomenon. Um, I'm not sure whether how well Amazon are sort of present in, in, uh, in Poland, but in, in Sweden and especially in UK, Amazon starts to get very sort of uh, well known. And basically also that many companies can start to see Amazon as an additional distribution channel. It's not only that can be a threat, it could also be an opportunity how they can sell a limited way of the product information to Amazon in order to use all the thing that Amazon stands for. So that is basically a little bit of figures why we believe that you as a company should become more digital now. And I also would like to give you a little bit of a a uh, couple of tips if you are in the process of reviewing to invest in the e-commerce platform. So number one is that, okay, make sure that you have your, your product information correct in your ERP system, because what will happen is that you will sort of expose your data that you have in your, in your ERP system out onto the web. And that means that it needs to be structured and relevant data. So yeah, product data correct in iScholar, tips number one. Number two is that uh, use your, have one single source where you update your, um, your sites. Let's assume that you're having one system where you maintain your official uh, or your corporate website. And then you might have another system where you update a customer portal. We strongly recommend that the e-commerce solution you're looking for can handle both these type of scenario, because then it means that you just need to have one single source where you update your product information. And by talking about um, product information, um, when inside iScala, when you should publish a product onto the web, you sort of need to enrich it with, for example, um, pictures, uh, documents, even more selling descriptions or attributes. That type of information is not, so I would say, the core of iScala to handle. That's why you need to have a PIM system. And it's much sort of easy way working, but having an embedded PIM system rather than having an integrated solution, because then it means that you need to go through an integration project as well. And the last piece is that, of course, the um, the basic, the fundamenta, look for a solid integration into iScala because that will save a lot of time when, for example, an order is entered via your customer portal or your web shop, it should be seamless pushed back to iScala and follow the same routine as you're having uh, if the order would have been entered directly via iScala's own interface. So um, the last slide, before jumping into the customer case. Our platform has four main modules. And if we start from the very bottom, you can see that the adapter for the integration into iScala, which comes along with the package, means it will not be an integration project. The integration is already there for you. Number two, the PIM system, as I talked about. We have a embedded PIM system, means that you can add pictures, yeah, descriptions, attributes, documents, whatever type of media you need in order to publish your product onto the customer portal. 
our solution supports that. And thirdly, the CMS system. The CMS system is basically where you build your, graf your customer portal with your graphical layout or your uh, corporate profile. That is where you build the web page itself. And number four, the B2B or B2C e-commerce adapter, allowing the customer to select the product, add it into the shopping cart, and then to purchase the product. So that is basically the four main modules that our sort of Epico storefront contains. So uh, I should now basically stop sharing here and I will jump into uh, the other customer case. Uh, if you just give me here one second, I will share my screen. Uh, Anna, could you just confirm to me that you see uh, Snickers uh, inventing working wear? Yes, yes, I can. Okay, yes. great. Just for me to understand that everybody sees the same yes, picture. I can see. Great. So Snickers, um, it's a uh, premium working wear brand uh, using storefront, Epico storefront in Poland as, as the e-commerce solution. And as you can see, uh, the graphical layout of the um, web page can look like this. And then we have, if you drill down, for example, in these short pans, uh, you can see that you have different, uh, uh, different options when it's coming to the, uh, the picture itself. And it seems like, yeah, it's going a little bit slow here. But I just wanted to sort of give you a short understanding that the graphical layout, oh, no matter what happened here, it goes very slow. Yes, here it comes. So what you can see that these type of pictures are then stored inside our PIM system. Uh, and then we have the different uh, sort of sizes also stored in our PIM system, but also stored in iScala. So it's basically how we can retrieve data from iScala. And if you're looking at this particular information also stored in our PIM system and also what type of color. So just want to share with you that, okay, this, this is what one website could look like using our platform. So we also have one local um, Polish customer called Smey selling um, in um, security products. And they have, as you can see, I would say a little bit of different um, approach that they do not publish any product information in, on the public website. They would like to show the product information behind the login procedure. I will now show you, uh, not particularly SME, but for another customer how we have done it. So this is typically different scenarios that you can have public information, public for anyone to access, or you can do it like SME, like, that have some information public, but otherwise type of information behind the login procedure. So the next um, page we'll go to is our demo site, which will show you a bit more in detail. Let's assume that I would like to go to purchase uh, some additional golf balls for my session here today. And then I said that, as I said, attributes can be added into our PIN system, means that they can be selectable for the end user on the website. And this is exactly what I'm doing here now. As you can see, I'm sorting um, golf balls depending on the type of um, uh, colors that I would like to purchase. And if we go on this particular golf ball, the blue one, you can see that we have a promotion campaign ongoing right now. So the normal price is $531 for one piece instead of $625, which is the, the original price. And this is basically data that we are taking. The pricing is taken from iScala. And then we have the ability, as you can see, which is actually the stock level. Why we have it in colors is because it's on the public website and you may not want to expose your total um, inventory to anyone. That's why we are showing it in colors. So in this particular case, 
um, we are having the green. And it's also possible to, to have the uh, colors like in red for low stock level, orange might be then for a reasonably good and green then color that everything is on stock to be able to purchase. So that is actually data how we're reading from iScala. So let's assume that me as a customer then logs in. And before logging in, um, I can say that each user uh, to the portal is tied to a customer ID inside iScala. So what that, that means? Well, it means that me as a user is tied to a customer ID inside iScala. And with that comes that we're then reading the customer unique product assortment they allow to sell. We are reading, for example, in this case, which I've highlighted now, the discount schema. We're also reading the delivery date from iScala. And now, instead of colors, we're having the stock level or the availability uh, in exact numbers. So that is basically, uh, I would say, data that we're combining both from iScala, but also from um, our PIM system, which for example, would be the, the picture here that we are reading. So once again, each user is tied put to a um, number customer ID inside iScala means that we are able to read this type of data simultaneously. So let's assume that I put 12 of those into the shopping cart. And I will then guide you through how uh, a um, um, yeah, checkout procedure would look like. And as you can see, uh, before uh, making the order, I get three type of options. Would you like to have it as an order, request for a quote or for a quotation? But in this particular case, we chose uh, order. And once again, we are reading the um, deliver address, the ship to address from iScala directly onto the web. And I press continue. And then I could remark uh, my order with, for example, minus test one. And once again, again here down to the right, uh, which I have highlighted, you can see there is a little bit of options of the um, delivery. And why we have these, why we're reading these type of options is because let's assume that the customer purchase or order two items, but the one of the items is out of stock while the other is on stock. Then the customer can choose whether they would like to have the shipment in one shipment or if there should be sort of two separate shipments depending how fast they want to have the uh, the uh, the goods. So in this particular case, we since both of them are in stock, we choose um, ship ASP. And then once again, um, we are reading the payment terms for these particular customer onto the web, means that this particular sort of uh, payment terms is set up in iScala. One, once again, reading the correct data from iScala. Press next. I get a um, order summary or where the, um, uh, invoice should be delivered to, and then what, what the goods should be sent to. I get the total uh, discount, if any, VAT and so on, as you can see. And then I just press confirm. And that order will then be pushed within a second back to the iScala and will be sort of treated in the same, same cylindrical way as the order have would been entered via iScala's own interface. So that was. I would say overall uh, presentation, what it would look like for a customer that they would like to take a product of your products, add it into the shopping cart and purchase it. The other thing that comes along with having the uh, Epicor storefront portal is my area. And my area is basically a area where your customer are able to search for orders. Uh, so this gives on summarize of, as you can see, there are two options here, either closed orders or open orders. And it's all orders uh, that has been entered into this customer ID. So the orders might have come via EDI, um, yeah, Epicor Storefront, or for example, Epicor's or iScala's own interface. So it really doesn't matter because this picture here, or this um, 
picture summarize uh, all the orders that ex currently on this particular customer. So if I would like to sort of drill down on this particular order to see what the status is or the quantity for each and every order, it's very easy to, for me to do that. Similar, similar similarity here that it's also possible to drill down to these particular um, product. And also what we have that we can also picking up the historically orders on this particular um, product when it's been purchased and the number of quantity. So that is also a features that we're having since we have this seamless integration into iSCAL that it can read even order history for this particular product. So um, that was order. Another thing of function that comes along with it is of course the ability to search for invoices. And once again, it's possible to, re to read by either closed or open invoices. And I can, for example, open, the, open this invoice to see whether the goods has been shipped. And then I get the delivery date, sorry, that highlighted here, the quantity and the invoice number. So anything that goes into iScala, we have the possibility to read it out to your customers when they access a portal like this. So that was, um, I was saying, overview session of, okay, how you add, as I said, a product into the shopping cart. We can review my area in terms of um, reading orders or invoices. Uh, I also would like to show another functionality uh, which we have when it's coming to spare part management. Uh, Maxon Lift, which is a current customer of ours, uh, they have uh, they are producing um, lift in behind of trucks or, or cars. So in this particular case, um, if I as a user would like to purchase a spare part, and I might not doesn't know the exact uh, spare part number of the spare part I would like to purchase. That's why we have sort of built a, um, a exploded you functionality means that I can select what type of product I'm having. I'm having a ME2, I have it on a pickup, and it's been um, 2019 years model. So in this particular case, what will happen then is that we will actually pull up the exploded view. So this is a summarize of all the components for this particular lift gate. So instead of me need to know the exact spare part number, I can view this exploded view and just hover over, over each um, item, see that, okay, this particular cylinder, that was the one that I needed to purchase. I can click on that one. As you can see, it follows the same routine that this is the is cylinder, add it into the shopping cart. And I go to the notification down here, to the right that has been added into the shopping cart. And it was also this uh, pin that I also needed to add. And I would like to have two of those instead, add it into the shopping cart. Once again, notification down here that has been added to the, to the uh, shopping cart. If I then would like to go to the checkout, um, this follows the same routine that since I'm logged in, I will now get the summarize of the sort of uh, the component that I have selected. There's another dimension also, if possible, when it's coming to spare part, it's possible to search via numbers. So this is, as you can see, I'm just typing in the number in the quick shop, or I can even type by letters, and that will also pick up the um, parts that is part of these particular letters that I'm uh, pulling in. So that is, I would say, one of course isolated sort of feature that we have that ma handles the spare part management. And um, I also wanted to show another um, another customer case that we have the uh, VB ladders. They are producing ladders for either roof or walls. And today they have like 
I think is if you could select, I think there's about close to 10,000 options if you should select a ladder. In order for us to help the customer to make the right selections, we have done a, I would say, a configurator or a sales wizard that will help the customer to choose the, um, the correct ladder. So in this particular case, I would like to have a ladder for the roof. I select the roof. Then I need to define, okay, how high is the house between four to eight meters? I have tiles on my roof. And then I like to have a steel ladder. And I think you follow the concept here that depending on the selection that I'm doing, I either get selections that is part of the product or also, of course, not part of the product. So in this particular case, the length of the roof is 6.6. .6. And then I could choose that I want to have a black. And safement equipment if, if I like. Uh, if I don't like, I can just show my configuration. So in this from 10,000 different options, we are coming now down to these type of options that the customer easily could sort of print out, add to the shopping cart, or go to the, the closest shop in order to, to purchase these type of letters. So um, I think we said that we should do it for 30 minutes. Um, I think I've done it for 27 minutes. Um, is there anything particular you want me to add, Anna? I think it's, uh, you covered most of the cases. Uh, yeah. I don't know if there are any questions for the, from the participants. Yes. Uh, I can see I can see here one question was that okay the size um of the uh, installation project and we can see that okay of course depending on how much resources customer themselves can add into the project we see in between maybe the 3 to 4 months that the project will last for to do such an implementation uh, I could also find one question here regarding the integration and uh, yes the integration is part of the product epico storefront so it means that there is no additional integration project needs to be done since we have done it as part of the product it's just the uh, basically play start and play with it uh, as soon as the installation is done and of course it might be some uh, if there are very sort of unique customer demands, of course we can also sort of squeeze and, and twist the integration. But so far uh, we have been able to do the integration as, as it is out of the box. Um, I could see that. Um, and the version, yes, I have another question, a question regarding what type of version uh, we handle. <clears throat> we basically handle all versions from 2.4, 2.3 of iScala and on up onwards. So um, uh, I think we cover yeah, all the versions that's basically available today. Um, yes, that was um, basically the questions that um, comes. But um, it was a, um, I've said, an overall introduction of uh, Epico Storefront. And uh, please reach out to Anna if any one of you would like to have a more detailed presentation in somehow. Um, I don't think if you would like to add anything particular, Anna. No, I think that this is a very good point that you mentioned that if there are any, any questions from, your side, please contact me or Magnus directly and we can organize a follow-up uh, presentation, more detailed one, more focused on, on your industry. And because today it was just, a, let's say, give you the flavor, just a, just a brief overview of, of the possibilities. But we, of, of course we can dig into details. So contact us if there is such a need. So yes, we just said thank you for inviting me, Anna, and um, I wish you all a good day. Thank you very much. Thank, thanks to all of you for participating. Yeah.
Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.